Hello friends, it's Dave here from Safe Decks and my favourite genre of game has to be the 3D platformer. I did a video last week of four 3D platformers coming to the Switch, but there's already plenty on there. I loved the N64 PS1 era where 3D platformers were everywhere, the likes of Mario 64 and the Crash and Spyro trilogies. And today, on the Switch, we have the likes of uh, Mario 64 and the um, Crash and Spyro trilogies. But, but I also loved finding the one-off games like Glover and Rocket Robot on Wheels, and there's plenty like that on the Switch. So for those looking for some 3D platformer action, let's take a look at what's available on the Switch right now. Also, hit that subscribe button while you're watching, it really helps us out. Thank you. I should also say that today is March the 10th, so happy Mario Day everyone! Let's start with his game, shall we? During this intro I've been showing off Super Mario Odyssey. This is the obvious one that everyone knows about and it's a damn good one. Bringing Mario back to the sandbox style of gameplay, finding power moons and using Cappy to capture his enemies and use their abilities against them. It's an outstanding game, one of the best I've ever played, but that's one everyone knows about. It sells on the eShop for £49.99, €59.99 or $59.99, pretty much the same as any of Nintendo's games on there, but they can also be found cheaper physically if you shop around. Occasionally it gets about a 33% off reduction, but I'm mostly going to be saying their full regular price. And on Amazon right now you can get it for like 36 quid, which is an absolute bargain I think. But anyway, let's move on. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So I thought I'd bring this one up as well, as there isn't a whole lot of time left for this one. It was released last September to commemorate Mario's 35th anniversary, and it contains Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and a Super Mario Galaxy, with a few tweaks here and there, but they're mostly the same games as before, just upscaled to HD. It is a limited release, so at the end of March it will disappear from sale, you can still play it if you already bought it, but new players won't be able to buy it, which is very odd and a very strange thing to do, but hopefully they'll be sold individually, but there's no guarantees for that. They are fun games to play and hit that nostalgic itch, and those that didn't grow up with the games might find it hard to get into Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine as they haven't really aged the best, but Galaxy is amazing and it feels like a new game, so if they do go individually then maybe getting just Galaxy is the way to go here. They sell for that same regular price on the eShop, but I have seen the physical copy going for $36.99 on Amazon, so that's the way to go I would say. If you are interested in this then you need to act fast and if you're watching this in April then sadly you're too late. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. The final Mario game here is a port of a Wii U game and has a more linear style of gameplay. It's a really fun one this, and, and although I loved it on the Wii U, I was initially disappointed that it wasn't a big sandbox Mario game, but now that we have Odyssey, 3D World sits very nicely alongside it on the Switch as its own thing. And there's also Bowser's Fury, a new mode that has a big open world with collectathon style gameplay and a horrifying model of Bowser. I already reviewed the Bowser's Fury mode on this channel, as well as written a full review of the whole package for Switch Up. Links to both videos are in the description, so check those out. But really, even though this is full price, those that didn't own it on the Wii U are getting so much value for money here. 3D World is a huge game with lots of content, and Bowser's Fury is a smaller, but really fun extra. Even though I already owned this game before, I did not regret buying this again. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I mentioned Crash earlier in the intro. Well, the Insane Trilogy is available on the Switch. These are full remakes of the three Crash Bandicoot games released on PlayStation 1, and they are so much fun to play still today. They are linear platformers and can get quite difficult as the games progress. One thing I love about these games is the extra bonuses you get for things like smashing every box on the level, and there's these awesome time trials of the levels where smashing certain boxes freezes the timer for a few seconds. And sometimes you need to revisit levels later on after unlocking something to access secret areas. 
There's so much going on in these games and completing them fully is well worth your time and it is insanely good value for money, costing $34.99 on the eShop. And the fourth game hits the Switch in just a few days of this video going up, so get playing through this one quick. From one collection of classic PS1 games to another, Spyro Reignited Trilogy is also on Switch and has been given the same love and attention as Crash. I am only showing the trailer here as I don't own these on Switch, I have them on the PS4 instead, but either way it's a fun time. These are less linear than the Crash games and have plenty of collectibles to find and a really fun moveset as he charges, breathes fire and glides around. Same price as Crash as well and well worth it. Banjo Kazooie is my favourite game of all time and it pains me that Microsoft won't let us Switch owners have it. But in the meantime, I'll have to settle for ukulele. A Kickstarter success story from the creators of Banjo, it really does carry the same charm. The minute I booted this game up and heard that music, I felt like I was home. This one didn't get the best reception when it released and I really don't know why. I found this to be a really fun time. Not as good as Banjo, of course, but I wouldn't have expected it to. Yuka and Lady are on a mission to collect golden pages from Capital B, and you get five worlds to explore looking for them. I found the controls really good in this one, the moves are a lot of fun and I just loved exploring this game. Like with Odyssey, I found myself enjoying it more and more with each playthrough, and I'm sorry guys, but I just love this game. It does have a bit of a higher price tag than I would have expected, at £34.99, €39.99 or $39.99, but for those who are hesitant about it, it does get some good discounts now and then. Now bring us Banjo and my life will be complete. And now for a game that got a better reception than Ukulele, A Hat in Time. Hat Kid is on a quest to retrieve her timepieces from all sorts of creative and wonderful worlds, this one is slightly less open than Ukulele in that you choose a mission when you enter a world and you leave the level after completing it, kind of like Mario 64 and Sunshine, but the levels themselves are a lot of fun to play and there's a lot of really fun characters and stories going on in each mission. The moves in this one are fun to pull off too, including the extra hats you can unlock, I especially like the one that turns you into a nice sculpture. This one is on the eShop for £25.19, €27.99 or $29.99, but I do see it cheaper physically from time to time, so shop around. There's also DLC as well that can be included with the physical version, so look out for that. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated This is a remake of a 2003 game. It has been given a nice makeover, but plays just like the old game. For Spongebob fans, this is a good one to get, and you'll have a good time with it. The levels have a linear feel to them, but you are tasked with collecting golden spatulas along the way, so you may find yourself wanting to backtrack to find ones you've missed. The single player is a really fun time, if not the most polished, and they added a co-op multiplayer mode too, which is the most tedious thing I've ever played, so don't bother with that. We did a review of this one for Switch Up as well, so check that out. It sells for these prices on the eShop, but you can easily find this cheaper physically, so definitely look online, shop around, you can get them for under 20 easily. And let's take another look at a remaster from that era, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger HD. Uh, this is a game I didn't play back in the day, but I did play the GameCube version a few years ago and loved it, and now it's on the Switch, I can play it on the go. You get boomerangs in this one, so that's an automatic 10 out of 10 right there. There are some fun characters as well. I'm not too far into this game yet, but I have been enjoying myself with it. The levels have had a linear path, but each one has had collectibles along the way, kind of like Spongebob did, which has made the levels fun to just stop and explore as I progress through, rather than just blasting through them. I did do a stream of me playing the start of this game, so the link will be in the description if you want to see how this game starts, and that should give you enough to see if it's the sort of game you'd like. It sells for £23.99 though, and the equivalents down there, uh, but I felt that was a bit too high, seeing that I already owned it on the GameCube, but I picked it up when it was on a sale, it was somewhere in the teens, and I really do not regret that purchase. Definitely worth it at that price. Let's take a back seat now and look at a gentler platformer. 
Moodle Tree Adventures is one that I feel is aimed at a younger audience, a beginner's platformer if you will. You are tasked with exploring the levels, finding the magical water droplets. You can jump obviously, and you have a leaf to attack with. The controls are very simple here, and it is very easy to pick up and play, and very easy to beat. I played it to completion in less than an hour. But then, it does only ask for a small price, so you can't really complain too much. If you have a young child wanting to get into the genre, this wouldn't be a bad place to start, but more experienced players might be better off avoiding this one. I do hear the sequel is better. The trailer looks cool look, and there's more open worlds in it and there's more uses for the leaf, including gliding, but I haven't played that one so I can't really comment. So let's go from one short easy game to another. Macbat64 is a game that I've reviewed on this channel already, and I really enjoyed this one. But I feel this is aimed at a very specific kind of gamer, and I fit right into that category. I do warn you, this is an incredibly short and easy game. I beat it in half an hour on my first playthrough, and the post game doesn't quite double that time. But it does have an extremely low price though, £1.79, €1.99, $1.99. But what made me enjoy this though? Well you may have noticed it has N64 style graphics, and it doesn't just look like a game replicating that era, it looks like it was made in that era. I don't know why, but that alone just made me smile, and it was worth the small asking price just to experience the presentation. If you have no nostalgia or appreciation for those N64 games, then you best avoid this. But for those that do, take a look, it costs so little, and you may have a good time with it. New Super Lucky's Tale. This was an Xbox One game that has been brought over to the Switch. Seriously? Microsoft, you bring this one over but not Banjo? My goodness me. But the good news is, this is a very decent platformer. A tad on the easy side for my liking, but still very enjoyable. Each world has a hub area, with entrances to the levels. Some are 3D sandbox style, some are 2D, and some are auto runners. Each level has four pages to collect, one for beating the level, one for finding the five L-U-C-K-Y letters, one for collecting 300 coins, and one that is... hidden somewhere. You need these pages to unlock the boss of that world before moving on to the next one, but you are not required to find many of the pages, so you can just skip some of the levels if you want. The moves are fun, especially the burrowing mechanic. It's the sort of game where you can just simply play through the levels to beat the game no problem, or you can revisit them to find everything as well for some extra challenge. It's a fun time, and I wrote a review of this one for Switch Up. It's priced at £26.99, or €29.99 and $29.99, but don't do that, as I've seen this a lot cheaper physically, even at launch. Amazon is selling this for a tenner as I write this script. It's a code in the box, but it's still very cheap. That is an absolute bargain. But if that physical price didn't exist, then I'd say the eShop price isn't too bad for it. I can't help but feel though, that the burrowing mechanic was an inspiration for the next game. Mail Mole. This was a very recent release on the Switch. I even included it in my upcoming games video just last week. It looked like a new Super Lucky's Tale clone at first, taking inspiration from that burrowing mechanic I keep mentioning, but this game takes that single mechanic and builds an entire game around it, and it was so much better than I thought it was going to be. I reviewed this game too if you want more details, but I really do recommend it. It sells for £13.49, €14.99 and $14.99, but it currently has a 25% discount and I think it is well worth that price. Check this one out. Unbox Newbie's Adventure so, Mail Mold is about a character making deliveries, so why not play as a box delivering itself? This is a bizarre game, and I haven't even played it all that much, but I really like it so far. The controls are weird. They don't really work well, but they sort of do at the same time. Like, the dodgy controls is what they were going for. On the surface, it is a sandbox collectathon, finding things like stamps and golden tape. The stamps are basically your stars being the main collectible, locked behind missions, and some are just being hidden around. 
The main gimmick is in the jumping. You press R to jump, but pressing L lets you unbox. Basically, you are a box inside six boxes, and each L press makes you discard the outer box for an extra jump in the air. Travelling around this way with up to six mid-air jumps is a lot of fun. This game is just simply bonkers. The boxes are also your health, so you are basically sacrificing a hit point for that extra boost in the air. Did I mention this game is bonkers? £24.99 or €29.99 Euros and dollars is the asking price and I think that is quite high. Uh, wait for a sale on this one, I bought it for about £7.50 on a sale I think and for that price I think it's really good, uh, but be warned, you may not like this one. I can see the controls being very divisive here, but if you're in the right mood and just take it on the chin, then they are a good laugh. So let's finish with a hidden gem. Poi Explorer Edition is a really good 3D platformer that takes me back to the days of finding those standalone adventures on the N64. You play as either a boy or a girl explorer searching for medallions. It has a Mario 64 or sunshine structure of entering a level, finding one and then coming back to the hub world. The controls are basic but you unlock new abilities as you go along such as a shovel for digging things up and a compass to help you find collectibles. There are over a hundred medallions in this game to find across four main worlds but there are also plenty of smaller bonus areas too, including your obligatory slide level. Gliding around the hub world is a lot of fun. I 100%ed this game and I absolutely love it. It sells on the eShop for £17.99 or €19.99 and according to my source, uh, $9.99. Um, if that's true, then America are getting an absolute bargain with this one. And yeah, that is well worth picking up for the asking price alone. And I hope this game did well enough because no one ever really talks about it. It didn't come out long after Mario Odyssey, I mean that could be why it got overshadowed, but honestly guys, give this one a go, it really deserves your time. So those are some 3D platformers available on the Switch and what I think of them, but what do you think of them? Let me know in the comments down below, make sure you check out the links in the description to see more from some of these games I've mentioned, and hit that like and subscribe to see more from us in the future. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next one.